Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King, and we're coming to you from the locker room today here on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. We're going to be speaking with head coach Willis Wilson of men's basketball and Steve Green, new head coach of Islanders Volleyball. We also have a special feature coming up focusing on men's basketball and that new freshman class. But to get things started, we'll start off with the head coach of men's basketball, Coach Willis Wilson. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Very, very good. You know, we're inching month by month closer to the start of the 16-17 season. You know, has there been any uh, breakthroughs possibly, even with your veterans, but truthfully, more importantly, with your newcomers? Well, breakthroughs, I mean, that's a rel relative term. But uh, having said that, um, I think we've made unbelievable progress considering we have so many young guys. The thing that, that uh, or let me rephrase, where we've made the breakthrough sure. with those young guys is we have playmakers. We have guys that can make plays. Uh, it's, it's really thrilling and exciting to see some of those guys play with freedom. We've got to get them to the point where they're, where they're actually feeling that freedom more often and more frequently. But when, the, when they make plays, man, it, it's just a, a vibe in the gym yeah. that gets everybody going. And we, we all feel like if we can continue to grow at a, at a comfortable pace that we've got a chance to really put together a, another great season. You know, the schedule was officially released back on September 13th. You know, outside of the obvious conference schedule that you play each year, what are the challenges and the strategy of building a non-conference schedule? Well, strategy was to get the schedule done. <laughs> First and foremost, <laughs> well, yes. We're, we're at a point as a basketball program where it's a little more challenging to, to schedule. When somebody looks up your record and they see 25 wins versus 8 losses, you know, is that somebody you want to play on the road? Is that somebody you want to play at home? And the, the truth of the matter is we're building a, a breakthrough program and we need a breakthrough in scheduling. We need to be able to play more and more good teams that, and we need to be in a position to beat those teams when we have the opportunity to play them. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? So we're kind of at a point with scheduling that we didn't get everything we wanted. The rhythm and the flow of the schedule probably is not ideal. Uh, going into this year, but it is what it is. We're going to mm -hmm. play sure. uh, each of those games, and we've got to put our best foot forward. The, the great thing about the schedule is I think the circumstances are really going to ch uh, challenge us in terms of travel and, and okay. some of the logistic things. You know, you've also had a, a bit of a different lineup on your assistant coaching staff coming up for the season. You know, can you bring us up to speed on some of the transitions as well as maybe new personnel? Well, we've got a few, we've got a few changes that are, that are – uh, taking place currently, but the, the one that we can talk about and I'm most excited about right now is just Terry Johnson being elevated uh, to a full-time assistant coaching position. I know it's something that he's been dying to do. He's been tremendous behind the scenes for us, and I think his, uh, his drive, his work ethic is really going to be beneficial. He has great relationships with the players. His relationships and his learning curve in terms of how we do things uh, with the veteran coaches on our staff, Mark Danhoff and Marty Gross, has been fun to watch. It's been fun to see that evolution take place. So we're really, really excited about him. We've got a couple other guys that we're going to add uh, to the fold here real soon okay. uh, to handle some of our operation, operational aspects of the program. But uh, really excited about Terry and, and what he brings to the program. No doubt. Now, we've seen a familiar face kind of roaming the hallways and the gyms here lately. Uh, Dr. Joe Carr. He, he's been around making a return visit. What has been his role or his contribution to the growth of the program? You know, that's a, that's a hard question to answer in a short period of time, but Joe Carr has been, uh, I'd say that he's just been a great friend. Okay. And, and really what I mean by that is he brings a level of honesty and integrity to the conversation. I think the, the moments where all teams struggle to communicate whether it's player to player, coach to player, coach to coach, he he helps kind of create a, an environment where, where people can be honest. Honesty builds trust, trust builds confidence, confidence translates to the court. No doubt. Now, the program is preparing for the regular season, but I do see them out and about. I know they're getting ready and trying to get focused, but I see them out and about at other athletic events, which is great to see. Is that kind of a coach's mandate, or is this something they take upon themselves? It's, it's a program thing. It's not a mandate. If it's a mandate, then it's something that guys feel like they have to do. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a thing. It's a cultural thing where guys know the importance. They know the importance of supporting other athletic teams. They know the importance of being out and being visible on campus and in the community. They recognized all the benefits of those things, and they're willing. And I think that's the, 
the key word for us. Sure. We've got to be willing to fight for inches, and those are inches that maybe don't translate directly into the practice gym or games, but they do translate into the big picture of having a championship campaign. I got one question for you, Coach. Uh, graduate student Jay Cohen. I want to pinpoint this gentleman. Slated to compete this season. He's been plagued by injuries his entire career. He's entering his sixth year. Now, you didn't have to invite or even encourage him to return, but you did. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about his story, why you want him, and what his presence does to this team? Jake's a fighter. He's a fighter. He's a competitor. Uh, he knows the things that we do. He knows how we do those things. And I just think he's a guy that's going to make a difference in a lot of possessions. He'll be great for the younger guys in the program. He'll be great for the veteran guys in the program and bringing guys together. But he's a mature, old, older kid that has a lot of experience. And he wants to be here. I think that's as important yeah. as anything. He wants to be here. There's, there, aren't, uh, there aren't dynamics or circumstances to his willingness to be here. He wants to be here. He wants to help. And he wants to win a championship. We all want to win a championship, that's for sure. Coach, thank you again. My pleasure. Willis Wilson joining us again here in the locker room. Let's now send it out to Shelby Hodges and an Islander update. Thanks, Stephen. I'm here at the Thomas J. Henry Tennis Center on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, where the Islanders tennis team recently hosted the Islander Open, presented by Kevin Lyles, PC trial lawyer. The three-day event ended with an All-Islanders women's singles final and a victory in men's doubles over the rival Lamar Cardinals. Well, uh, we definitely had a free amazing days of tennis. Uh, we all really enjoyed playing and representing the school. I'm happy we had uh, Islanders in both men's and women's finals and uh, men's and women's singles as well. Uh, we all fought so hard and we showed our great spirit and energy and I think that's very important. You know, they're, it's, it's hard playing your teammate because you're used to cheering for them. But, I mean, they got out and battled, and they've both improved so much. Just really proud of Judith and proud of Yelena. The cooks were really impressive. Um, you know, there's kids that you just hope so much that they succeed because they're such good, high-character kids. And I would put both Paul and Mitchell Cook in that category. Uh, it was very satisfying, especially playing with Paul. We've, we started here together three years ago, and it's just a great feeling to have come so far together and, and learned so much. And we've played a lot of matches together, and just to get that extra extra few matches here and some confidence going into the, the fall season is, is, is really satisfying. Um, a tournament like this brings a lot to a lot of people in this city, a lot to our university, and, and just to see it come together, I mean, I say every year this is the best tennis community in the nation, but, you know, after this weekend, I believe the same plus an, another 5%. The Islanders tennis teams will conclude their fall competitions on October 20th before breaking to prepare for the 2017 spring season. Islanders cross country has also had some success at home, sweeping all titles at the Islanders splash held on September 16th. Both the men's and women's teams had the top finisher in their respective races and had the highest score in the team standings. Hey, anytime you can win your home meet, it's really good. We evened up the, the South Texas showdown. We got even with the uh, Rio Grande Vaquero women beating them this time. We'll have to see who gets the rubber match next time we race them. Guys' side looked pretty good. Uh, the guys won, girls won. I thought Caesar ran extremely well. Caesar, Jeff Lopez ran well. Steven Medlin came through, was our fourth guy. And Dominic Baptiste was our fifth guy, ran really well. On the girls' side, Cynthia won the race. Looked uh, pretty relaxed. I was really happy to see uh, Morgan McCutcheon and Liz right in there together. And then uh, uh, not too far behind was Carissa. Well, I'm very proud of my teammates and I, and I feel like we did good for our first meet. And, you know, I, we had a lot of freshmen, and, you know, we were just trying to get them comfortable. And actually, like, as a team, we're doing really good. And as an individual, I feel like I did great. I wish I would have had a, a little bit more pressure with my teammates, but I feel like they were right in front, so that was a pro. We've been doing this meet, the 17th year of this meet, and it's always good to win the splash. Next, Islanders Cross Country will compete at Incarnate Word on October 8th, followed by the Southland Championships on October 28th. Lastly, Islanders Volleyball is off to a hot start in conference play, currently sitting at a record of 4-0. A highlight for the Blue and Green was a 3-1 win over rival UTRGV on September 6th, as part of the South Texas Showdown presented by Navy Army Community Credit Union. I think, you know, we, we pride ourselves on our ball control. If our offense gets a slow start, it's, it's not the end of the world for us. I think, you know, we focused on our block and on our defense. And, uh, you know, I think part of it is the jitters at home. You know, we had a thousand fans here and it was a great student section. And, you know, sometimes we, we play a little too hard, you know, and get a little excited and that affects our offensive numbers. But we turned it around and, and had a great offensive run and sets three and four.
Yeah, it was really great to see um, the stands full. You know, we had all of our athletic teams here to support us, which is always really helpful. You know, I love it when we get a good kill or a good block or a good dig and the whole crowd just stands up. It really, really helps and we feed off their energy. I was feeling great. Our setter, Kristen, just kept feeding me the ball and I was ready, you know. When you play such a good blocking team like UTRGV, you know, you really have to be up early and ready and I think that's what we did tonight. She's, she's been doing an awesome job in practice. I mean, day in and day out, she works really hard and, you know, she does a great job in practice and it hasn't really shown up in matches for her yet until tonight and uh, hopefully it continues the rest of the way. The team will host four home games during the month of October at the Dugan Wellness Center before heading to the Southland Championships from November 18th through the 20th. When we return, Stephen King will have coach Steve Green to take a closer look at Islanders Volleyball. More to come on Islanders Insider. The Southland Conference. 4,200 student athletes. From across the country. And around the world. Representing 13 member institutions. From Arkansas. Texas and Louisiana. Excelling in 17 NCAA Division I sports. In the classroom. And in our communities. We, we are Southland, Southland Strong. Strong. Evans Glass Service, for all of your auto, residential, and commercial glass needs. We offer tinting for the windows on your vehicle and home, and we also service commercial properties. Block the heat and protect your interior from harmful UV rays. Plus, improve the style and privacy of your car, home, or office. Glass replacement or repair. And window tinting. Free estimates, and we will come to you 24 hours a day. Evans Glass, where we specialize in service. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we're going to be talking some Islanders volleyball. On February 4th of this year, Scott Lazenby, Athletic Director for Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi, announced the hiring of the fourth head coach in Islanders volleyball history. His name is Steve Green, and he joins us right now. How are you doing, Coach? Good. How are you? Very, very good. First and foremost, why did you pursue the opportunity to be the head coach of the Islanders? You know, it's, a, it's an opportunity I've been looking for for a long time. Um, I knew the previous coach, Coach Greystone, pretty well and have been following his career and the success that he's had here. And I'm hoping to, you know, come down here and, and build on that success. Um, I've been lucky to be, you know, coaching Division One volleyball in Texas for the past seven years um, before I came here. And so I knew a lot about the university, a lot about the area. And uh, it's really a dream come true for my family to come down here and have the opportunity to, you know, live on the island and you know work for, work at the island university and uh, continue to build on coach Greystone's success. Well, obviously the team did have a great success last year uh, knowing that you had an evaluation period to determine, you know, the changes, the adjustments you wanted to make to make sure that they stayed good or got even better. Uh, obviously, now did you have to deconstruct and rebuild or did you make just subtle modifications to kind of fulfill your vision of what this team could be? You know, we're we're still in that transition period right now. Um, I think a lot of it is building on the success that Coach Greystone had had um, and with a, you know, returning players that we had. Um, we've moved a couple positions, changed a little things here and there. Um, you know, we're implementing some system changes as well with the style of volleyball we play. Sure. Um, but we're trying, you know, this season especially, we're not trying to do too much change-wise, although we are doing a little bit, um, just to make sure that it's kind of a meld of the two. Um, and then, you know, as we progress, you know, towards the end of the season, we're really starting to build a little bit more of you know, what this coaching staff is bringing and what these new players are bringing. Um, our, our new players have really 
um, brought in a whole different dynamic, and I think it's been exciting, and you know, we're, we're allowing that change to happen. You know, you work with setters at A&M and had some great success and accolades galore for your setters, but what has been your assessment of returning Southern Conference Setter of the Year, Kristen Nicholson, and her adoption of your quicker approach to the game? Yeah, Kristen Nicholson has been great. I mean, she really has, you know, she had a lot of success. You know, she was setter of the year in the conference last year. Um, you know, me coming in, you know, different coach, different style. Um, but, you know, she's adapted herself really well. Um, I think she's she's learned that, you know, in order to be successful, she has to do a little bit more um, in her game. You know, she has to be an attacker. Um, she has to do a good job blocking. She has to play defense. You know, there's more to it than just the setting role. And, um, you know, with that, I think, you know, she's got another setter on her roster, Madison Green, who's pushing her as well. And to have the two really pushing each other sure. has been great. And it's really helped Kristen kind of thrive in our environment. You know, you started with these ladies on the beach courts last spring, but ever since you've, had, you, you've gotten to work with them on the inside, what has been the most significant improvement in their game that has had the most significant impact? You know, I would say um, just the ball control itself, you know, the, the quality of the first touch, you know, when we're playing defense, when we're passing, you know, I think they were, we were a good defensive team before. Um, we, we had good touch on the ball, but it wasn't always um, what I would call perfect. You know, it wasn't always a ball pushed to the net where a setter could run our offense. And, you know, that's what we've been striving to do. And, and a lot of that is just getting really good position with the ball, being an athlete, um, you know, and I think, you know, Kate Kopeka has done an awesome job at that as our libero of really kind of setting that standard high um, and everyone else is trying to follow along. Um, she's a phenomenal player and so it's hard to, to do what she does, but um, everybody else is trying to catch up to that level. Always looking for improvements. If you could pinpoint one thing looking at this team that you think can help take them to the next level, what would it be? You know, I would say overall it's just our um, our confidence. You know, it's weird. It's a non-volleyball skill. I, I tend to always talk about skills as being the thing we need to improve on. But, you know, I think we, we still struggle a little bit um, when it comes to playing against teams that are either perceived as better than us or have more history behind them. Um, and I think, you know, as this season progresses, we're really starting to understand how good we actually are, um, how talented we are at all skills. And so... Um, we're, we're pushing to kind of build on our confidence right now. I know it's been a short time on the island for you coming here in February, less than a year, but if you were going to describe or give a definition of Islander Volleyball, what would it be? You know, I would say as of right now, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a driven team. Um, I would say, you know, they, they are invested. They really want to do well. Um, and so I would say, you know, Islander Volleyball, it, it kind of, you know, puts on a personification of the athletic department and the school. Um, being a, a group that is driven, that wants to, you know, succeed and wants to prove, you know, to everybody how good we actually can be. Coach, best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Steve Green joining us, head coach of Island Volleyball here in the Volleyball Locker Room. When we come back, we have our Chris Spahn Health System feature focusing on Islander men's basketball and their freshman class. Stay with us, Marticom. Islander Insider continues. Healthcare never sleeps. It's constantly changing. Hello. It's not a desk job. I'm on my feet all day. This is Trevor Three East. I'm Trevor Bonzer, and I'm a nurse manager at Christus Bond Shoreline. The faculty at AM Corpus Christi, you see the passion in their teaching. They will challenge you and, and they will motivate you. They want you to succeed. 97% of AM Corpus Christi graduates will be working or in graduate school upon graduation. Texas AM Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us today at tour.tamucc.edu. My family has been growing crops here since the late 1800s. We're Texas farmers through and through, and that's why we love HEB. They've been supporting local farms like ours for generations. And they buy more of our corn than anyone else in Texas. Over 10 million pounds annually, and they use it to make great products like HEB corn chips. So when you try them, you're eating a little piece of Texas. We're the Sawdoff family, and this is the locally grown department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time in our Krista Spahn Health Systems feature segment, we focus on Islander men's basketball and their incoming freshman class. This freshman group is definitely unique. Um, it has so many different personalities in one group, the six of us. Uh, I, I actually like this group of people because it's so many people that you could kind of relate to, like um, Colin, Elijah, York, Mel, Alex, they're like, all of them is just so different. It's kind of funny having us all, all together. I definitely like this freshman group. Well, like any freshman, there's going to be some good days and some bad days, but I really like this group because they're enthusiastic, they're passionate about what they're doing, they're really embracing both uh, the classroom and the stuff we're doing on the court, and I like the fact that they really ask a lot of questions. Well, obviously, a need for us this year was to secure our post position or our five man and our four man a little bit. So York Benjamin uh, has certainly shown with his body and athleticism that he's ready to play at this level. And Alex Holcomb has really been a pleasant surprise. We knew he was good, but he's shown us some things that we didn't really even know he could do. And every day he brings something that surprises us a little bit. And then Perry, he walks around with that smile all the time and he crashes the boards and has gotten better every Day. They've all gotten better every day, and that's that really encourages all of us. Like, like I love playing around York. Like he's a valuable ass, asset to this team. By the way, his aggression level is always on top. Like every time he's in practice, I'm rooming with York right now. <laughs> that has been a trip. <laughs> <laughs> like our, our kitchen is uh, it's messy, but it's it's livable. Except I don't like it being messy. <laughs> York is kind of blunt, let's say. The way he talk and the way he act, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> cause normal people will react a different way, but just cause it's York, it's okay. Like, <laughs> it's kind of fun. Out of the six, I would have to say Alex could probably contribute the most. The way he built, just his height, his size, the way he rebound the ball. We could use that early in the season. He's real quiet, but he's a guy who when he makes when he makes a good thing, or when he makes a good play, he's gonna let you know that he made a good play. Oh, uh, I actually live with Alex. Sometimes I might play some music and then he comes out and all starts dancing and whatnot. And so uh, he's a cool guy to be around, real, real laid back, chill guy. And I like, I like rooming with him. He's, a, he's an interesting young man. I like him. Perry Francois, like I'm probably, I'm probably the most tight with him. Like I don't know if it's because he's from Florida or like his accent or what, but we just we're real cool together. He just joke around with everybody. He made, he got real good people skills, so he can make friends with anybody off the bat just like that. Like we can go through the mall, he got like 50 new friends now. Perry, Perry is a, a special guy, you know? No, I love him. Honestly, I, I'm happy that I got to room with him. Um, it's funny, I mean, everybody knows he's Haitian, so um, he brings a completely different culture to the house. Um, it's very entertaining and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, Elijah and Jamel have shown that they can help us stretch the floor, but both of them have shown that in that position they can screen and shape and post a little bit with their size. Uh, Jamel's very high energy, like he's always messing with somebody, making some sort of joke. He dances all over the place, but definitely the life of the party, I guess. Oh, it's been a little fun with him. He's a very fun person to be around, like as far as what he said earlier when he said like he's the hype man. Cause like, like once he gets going, that he gets everybody going. Like if you have like five other people with him, that, that turns everybody on though. Out of all the freshmen though, I kind of enjoy spending most of my time probably is Elijah. He's so um, intelligent. And I guess the best way I could say is that like he was kind of raised right. And the way he is, just cause of that, and he say like little comments, just smart remarks that <laughs> you'd be like, what? <laughs> oh man, but definitely, yeah, I love Elijah. Elijah's a real brother to me. I feel like me and Colin uh, kind of hit it off a little bit. I take him into the gym at least twice a week. Me and him get some work in together. I like Colin, very clean. <laughs> he wants the house to feel like home. Like he was telling me like when Christmas come, we're gonna decorate the apartment. So for Christmas, when Halloween come, we're gonna do this. He kind of want to have like fake grass for our patio, have lawn chair. Like it's kind of nice, so it's good. As shoe game out of this world, like. <laughs> I couldn't put a number to it, but in his closet, it's like boxes of shoes everywhere. Like he have enough shoes to not repeat for like probably two months. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't know the exact number, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't say it right now. But yeah, he was not too happy whenever he found out what closet I got in the room, because I definitely have the bigger of the two, so. 
just spending time away from the gym together, whether that be, you know, going out to eat or, um, you know, guys coming over just playing video games or just hanging out, doing whatever, going to the beach. We have all been through the whole incoming freshman process and learning and a whole new system and all this type of stuff like that. So we're trying to just make their transition that much easier because we know we're going to have to rely on them later on down the stretch in the season. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. Let's take a look at what's coming up next for Islanders Athletics. During October, Islanders Volleyball will host four home games at the Dugan Wellness Center, including a rematch against Sam Houston State, who the Islanders swept back in September. And on October 25th, Islanders Men's and Women's Basketball will host the annual Islanders Invasion, also at the Dugan Wellness Center. Each team will play a blue and green scrimmage, and fans will be introduced to the new squads. And back to you, Stephen. Thank you, Shelby. And once again, we want to thank everybody here at the Islander Digital Network for making today's show possible. Most importantly, we want to thank the coaches for joining us, Willis Wilson, head coach of Islander Men's Basketball, and Steve Green, head coach of Islander Volleyball. And also, thank you for tuning in once again. I'm Stephen King. You've been watching Islanders Insider. I'm not originally from South Texas, but what do they say? I got here as fast as I could. I'm Steve. This is home. This is work. This is my church family, and cancer wasn't going to take me away from any of this. I received the right cancer care right here at home. Texas has been my home for 25 years and counting. I'm still counting because of the doctors, nurses, and great people of Christus Spawn. Thanks, Christus Spawn, for keeping me close to the things that matter most. At Navy Army, we're proud of our military roots, but you don't have to be in the military to be proud of where you bank. If you live in South Texas, chances are you can join. Each year, we welcome thousands of new members looking for a better way of banking. So carry that card with confidence because we take your financial success seriously at Navy Army Community Credit Union. Does your bank do that?